Sanctification by works or grace. Martin Luther only told half the story. We are justified by faith alone, but sanctified by good godly works, which marks the difference in a repentant sinner, unregenerate, still living the fleshly life, a worldly Christian, although contradictory in terms, and a redeemed saint. After salvation, then what? Well, Jesus showed us how to pray on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 9-16 So what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake, converted churchgoer? Salvation begins at faith, but doesn't end there. Martin Luther did not show the other side of the coin. God accepts you as you are, but doesn't leave you there. No good father, and definitely not your heavenly father, would. Nothing can damn a man but his own righteousness. Nothing can save him but the righteousness of Christ, said Charles Spurgeon. This being said, we are saved unto good works, not by good works, but unto them, a subsequent result of being saved. The point is timing. Before you are saved, you are working for yourself. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. After Jesus of Nazareth... Salvation, when you give up the rights to yourself, you start working for him, and works of wood, hay, and stubble will be burned up, but works of gold, silver, and precious stones will stand the test of Christ winnowing fire. 1 Corinthians 3, 11-15 For other foundation can no man lay than that, that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss." But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. After salvation we work for the Lord Jesus and are yoked, but his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Matthew eleven, twenty eight through thirty. The wages of sin is death, Romans six twenty three, the wages of sanctification, life. Galatians six five through ten. For every man that shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh reap corruption, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in good season, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Faith without works is dead. James 2.17 You shall know them by their fruits. Matthew 7.16 Spurgeon again, more clearly, I do not believe that any man can preach the gospel who does not preach the law. The law is the needle, and you cannot draw the silken thread of the gospel through a man's heart unless you first send the needle of the law to make way for it. A Christian's life should be marked by integrity, morals, ethics, all coming from the Holy Bible, King James Version. Sin and hell are married unless repentance proclaims the divorce. Holy practice is the most decisive evidence of the reality of repentance. And what is repentance? Turning, walking, no, running away, and from, and forsaking sin for the filth and decrepitness it is, leading to death and hell beyond that. The first duty of the gospel preacher is to declare God's law and show the nature of sin. Charles Spurgeon There is no point on which men make greater mistakes than on relation which exists between the law and the gospel. Let me say that again. There is no point on which men make greater mistakes than on the relation which exists between the law and the gospel. Also Charles Spurgeon. After we are justified, saved, redeemed, converted, born again, we are sanctified, which means we are set apart, but set apart by whom and to what? 
God Almighty, to do good works. Have you ever saved another soul? It is the most gratifying thing on earth and is the one thing, the only one thing you cannot do in heaven. This is because there is no sin to be saved from. Being sanctified is made into the image of Christ. How is this done? By the law, which is perfect, converting the soul and making wise the simple. Psalm 19.7 Are you still confused? Well, make it your aim to do that the things you understand out of the Holy Bible, King James Bible, and you won't have time for the things you don't understand. How come when Jesus obeys God's law it is only right, but for a Christian to obey God's law is legalism? We should aspire to be like Christ, like Jesus Christ, not our sinful self. His heart was attuned to the will of God because God's law was written thereon, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. 2 Corinthians 3.3 3. We could pray, not my will, but thine be done. Luke 22.42 after all, Matthew 6, 33, 34 tells us, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And what is pure religion? True religion? James 1.27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. By the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, we also must seek to make the will of God our greatest delight. In Christ we can live by faith, according to the laws of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We are saved solely by grace, but this is not to deliver us from the burdensome constraints of the law. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Hebrews 10.16 We show our love for God by obeying His word, the Holy Bible, KJV, His law. John 14.15 If you love me, Jesus speaking, keep my commandments. Anything else would be a license to sin and grace to no place. We need not worry about legalism when lawlessness is rampaging through our cities and hopeless. Hopefully people will recognize life is short. Hell and heaven are forever. Many people, may people and their hearts soften as they see people die more often. This will be the case in the Great Tribulation where over seven twelfths, seven, seven twelfths of the world's population will die. That's according to Revelation. It is sad, but it is true. Better it is to go through a little hell to get to heaven than a little heaven and go to hell. You must know what you are saved from to realize what you are saved to, which is the power of the law to show sin in its dying, dead, decomposing, decaying decadence. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. When you are saved, you are not sinless, but sinless. God wants to increase your character, fervor, resolve, integrity, and godly virtues. Christians should be set apart, sanctified into the image of Jesus, not little hellions living like the world. Second Peter 2, 8 through 12 And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past ye were were ye not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may be by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God, 
in the day of visitation. Do you judge the word of God, KJB, King James Version, the Bible, or does the word of God, the Bible, judge you? Look to Hebrews 4.12 for the answer. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's our hearts, not the word. The word shows us our hearts. Hebrews 4.13 is the answer. The reason there are no true revivals or convictions is tampering with the word of God to take out conviction of sin. It is then denial. A worldly Christian says it would be wrong to make people feel bad about themselves. Or would it? Should you feel bad about yourself going to hell? Like all hell you should. If there is no conviction, there is no word. The NKJV, CEV, ESV, ASV, NASV, NIV, Message, Jerusalem Bible, the Living, the RSV, all remove the guilt of trampling the blood of the only, the only begotten Son of God in exchange to feel good about themselves. If God felt good about you, why did Jesus have to die? The chief danger that confronts the coming century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, politics without God, heaven without hell. That's William Booth. And he also said, work as if everything depended upon work, and pray as if everything depended on prayer. Luke 16.31 And he said unto them, If they... Hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. We need the laws of God given to Moses to see we fail epically. We don't measure up. We miss the mark. Only Jesus fulfilled the law. Without it and him, we are going to hell in a handbasket. We have to recognize our failure by the law's conviction to see our need for the Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. He is the God of the law, our creator, in the first six, 24 evening and morning, 24 hour days, 5,778 years ago, as of 2018. He is our sustainer, as Acts 17, 28 says. He is our Savior, as John 3, 14 through 19, and judge, Acts 10, 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Quick and dead. James 4, 17-5-3 Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as if it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. The way of the Master shows obedience to God's law and the cost of repentance. Luke 18, 18-27 And a rule, certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest, thee, why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye, literal needle, 
than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. What will you do on judgment day? It is coming. How will you avoid the wrath to come? Have you ever told a lie? And if you have, if you say you haven't, you have. You just did. Have you ever stolen anything? Value is irrelevant. It is not the amount of sin, but the existence of sin that matters. Have you ever used God's name in vain, such as OMG and the like? Have you ever hated anyone even in thought? Have you ever looked with lust at a person of the opposite sex, therefore committing adultery? If you commit just one of these five out of the shortened ten, according to James 2.10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And just one sin a day, if you could do that, is over 80 years, 29,200 sins. So, you are lying, thieving, blaspheming, taking God's name in vain, murderous, according to Matthew 5.21, as Jesus said, and according to Matthew 5.28, adulterous, as Jesus said, sinner at heart. And that is just five of the Ten Commandments, not mentioning idolatry, making graving images such as TV and bowing down to them and worshiping them by wasting all your time watching dead people, usually, not observing and resting on the Sabbath, coveting what is not yours, and dishonoring mom and dad. In court, your good deeds don't outweigh your bad. That would be like saying, Judge, I gave $10 to the church, then I murdered her. I'm not guilty. <laughs> that is called bribing the judge and lying to yourself. Are you innocent or guilty? Will God judge you and send you to heaven or hell? Certainly hell. If you think not, just read 1 John 1, 8, 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you therefore innocent or guilty, and how guilty? So guilty, even your death does not pay for all your sin. Will God send you to heaven or hell? Hell. Doesn't that concern you? You see, Jesus died. Jesus died. He had his life to give so that we could have his life to live. He gave his life. He had his life to give so that we might have life, eternal life to live. Be sure of that. If you do not wish another soul to be saved, you are not saved yourself. Charles Spurgeon said, this is the formula of Jesus, the Master, as Luke 8, 8, 18, 18 through 27 shows, and to be an effective soul winner, we must follow. Without the law of God in your altar call, you're just flapping your jaw. Luke 16, 31. If they do not listen or heed Moses and the prophets, how will they repent if one shall rise from the dead?